We are going to rank every Kingdom Hearts 2 reaction command from worst to best. For those unaware, a reaction command is a special move Sora is able to do by pressing the triangle button. Now, the Kingdom Hearts series is pretty much available on everything out there. So the effects of the triangle button will do different things in different games. Regardless, by pressing it in Kingdom Hearts 2, you were able to jump into a quick time event where pressing the triangle button will do something incredibly flashy. From brutal combos to boss ending attacks, reaction commands add so much personality into the game. We're able to see just how strong Sora is in context to his enemies. While playing Final Fantasy 16, I found myself enjoying the quick time events in that game. They gave the game a grander sense of scope and really showed what Clyde can really do. This game is awesome, by the way. Oh my goodness. And they weren't available in Kingdom Hearts 3, leaving a lot of the scope in the gameplay mechanics instead. While Sora is a lot more robust in that title, the reaction commands not being in the game really limited the ways that we can see him use his abilities. We got something kinda like a reaction command when facing Scold and Frozen, and that was so cool. You could really feel the impact of the scripted sequence while also jumping back into the gameplay. They've also confirmed to make a return in Kingdom Hearts 4 due to people wanting them back. In Kingdom Hearts 2, there are hundreds of different reaction commands throughout the game, and truthfully, not all of them are cut from the same cloth. So we're going to be ranking every single one of them throughout Kingdom Hearts 2. I will be placing them in tiers F, D, C, B, A, and S. Obviously S tier is the best, while F tier is booty butt cheeks. We're going to take a look at the reaction command's effectiveness, flashiness, and overall context to the game. There are so many hidden details within these that I had to take a look at all of them. But before I get into it, please be sure to hit that like button and let me know what's your favorite snack food. I like popcorn the most. It's my go-to snack when I go to the movies. I love adding a little bit of extra butter. I asked because you should have your favorite snack nearby while watching this video, and I'm in the process of writing it right now. And truly, I feel like this is going to be a longer one than usual. Get comfortable, kick your feet up, and let's get critical about these silly little abilities. Time to start ranking every Kingdom Hearts 2 reaction command from worst to best. Fortunately, I only have three reaction commands that fall into the F tier, so this section should be done really quickly. With Rapid Blow, if Sora can counter these punches from this enemy, he'll be able to do three slashes in the air. It's not really the most visually appetizing one, but it does what it needs to do. I just feel like at this point in the story, doing normal air combos is just better feeling than this. Yeah, it's okay. I, it's so forgettable. I don't know. I really forgot this was even in the game. Moving on to Halloween Town, we've got Oogie Boogies 4. Sora gets into a golfing pose and attempts to knock Oogie from the top platform. But I just hate this fight so much, because you have to do this at bunch of times to actually get him to fall, and hopefully you can kill him before he runs away. The golf swing really leans into Sora's goofy personality, but that's really the only thing going for it. It's mandatory to get this fight done, and truthfully, not really much of a fan. And the last F tier is Call. This makes it so Timon and Pumbaa run towards Sora to avoid getting eaten by the hyenas. Although I've had instances where this sometimes just wouldn't work, like the AI for Timon and Pumbaa just aren't as reactive. And on harder difficulties, this section can be pretty tough with Timon and Pumbaa constantly dying. They just won't approach Sora like they should, and I often get hit by stray attacks. F tier wasn't so bad, just really basic ones to be honest. King TDD. To start us off, let's look at Beast Wake Up, Charge, and Get Up. At this point in the story, Beast is being patronized by Zaldin. He's feeding him lies about Belle wanting to hurt him and lie to him. This causes him to go into a fit of rage, and now Sora and Beast's companions need to work together. It's like this mini fight where you're just spamming the reaction commands to get it done. It's supposed to cause Beast to calm down so Sora can get some hits in, but it's easily one of the most forgettable reactions out there as well. The fight lasts only for less than a minute anyway, although I do think it's kind of cool how the Kingdom Hearts logo shows up in a flash though. It's okay. With Luke's sword flip, you're able to turn around his cards, often revealing nothing, but if you aren't careful, you'll get blown up right in the face. The angle of these cards is always a bit off, so I'm never fully sure when I'm flipping them. It always seems like they're hiding from the perspective of the camera. Then he does this house of cards stuff where a bunch just start to appear and you gotta flip them all. At some points, I just said screw it and started running away when this happens. Dodge Roll. Originally an ability in Kingdom Hearts 1 that allowed you to get away from enemies, when Kingdom Hearts 2 released, Dodge Roll was allocated to a reaction command for a bomb enemy. It's so boneless compared to the version we got in Kingdom Hearts 1. Fortunately, they fixed it in the Final Mix version by adding Dodge Roll with Limit Form, but to see our perfect ability reduced to this? Shameful. Hercules Aura Guard and Aura Shot. These appear during the battle with Hades in the second visit to Olympus Coliseum. Aura Guard will summon a small shield for Sora and friends to hide behind, while Aura Shot made it so Sora can hit Hades out of his fiery rage form. The issues with both of these abilities are how laggy they are. When setting up an Aura Shot, it takes forever for Sora to actually hit it. When it's finally time, Hades has probably teleported to the other side of the map. You gotta get the timing just right. As for Aura Guard, I never use this. I like to set it up and then immediately leave because it's Kingdom Hearts 2. I'm not scared of death and this little shield is not gonna do nothing for 
problem. The experiment kickspring. During this fight, it'll break off into a bunch of smaller pieces. Trying to get the kickspring to land is such a pain since Sora can get hit out of it, but I feel like I'm always getting hit by a laser before I can complete it. If it didn't put the enemy back together, I'd probably never use it. Commander, Zark, Zone Guard, and Dish Strike. This is the first section of the MCP boss battle where Sark is in a normal size. Sora can reflect his disc back at him and it works all on his own. The thing with this one is that you'll probably barely use it since this phase of the fight is over so soon. It's something that just happens so fast that you'll probably miss out if you aren't careful. Inside combo. This is the one where you jump inside of the Heartless's mouth that ate up Lock, Shock, and Barrel. It just quickly stuns it for a little bit, giving Sora a chance to attack. It also happens really fast too. One of those blink and you'll miss it reaction commands. This fight is okay. Storm Rider, hang on and let go. During the Mulan second visit, you'll face off against the Storm Rider. With these reaction commands, Sora will latch onto this Heartless body, preventing him from falling off. This way, the player can get a few extra combos before being knocked off later. It's an effective ability. I just find myself falling right after using it anyway. Really just a skill check moment for me. Fire a gun and blizz a gun. Honestly, you'd think this'd be much higher since it evolves a boss battle that I like a lot. I just don't know how to explain it, but there's just so much action to this ability without the impact. Like you throw them into one another and then they just kind of jiggle there. Sure, it leaves them wide open for an attack, but I was at least hoping they would explode or something when they touch each other. Underwhelming to say the least. Dispel. Now there's two instances of Dispel in Kingdom Hearts 2. The first instance is against the Shaman Heartless, which removes the fire from overtaking Lion Sora. And the second is by battling Zexion and Sora is trying to remove himself from the lexicon. I'm putting them right next to each other since they pretty much do the same thing. Just remove something that was hindering Sora's abilities to perform in battle. The lexicon one is a little bit more flashy, but it still all does the same thing. There's also flip that allows Sora to turn the pages to find the correct one and break whenever he gets trapped inside one of these books. In general, this whole battle is built around escaping his clutches. Speaking of escaping, we have Vex and Break. You're trying to get out of a block of ice for this one just by mashing the triangle button. And you'll probably be doing this a lot in this fight. Another one of those you just gotta get out of there. And to close out D tier, I'm gonna be talking about the reaction command that started the entire idea for this video. So I was playing Kingdom Hearts 2 and I was at the section where Sora and Leon need to protect the gates at the Bailey, very early in the game. Normally this section is super easy, making it so you can clear it without any issues. Although if Leon dies at some point during this interaction, the recovery run reaction command will appear. Sora will fly around Leon and instantly heal him, bringing him back into battle. And I've played Kingdom Hearts 2 hundreds of times and I had no idea this ability was even in the game. So it's in D tier. D for discovered. Also D because I had no idea this even existed until a couple days ago. Crazy how this game still finds a way to surprise me after all these years. <laughs> To begin with C tier, I'll be combining all of the capsule prizes. Rare capsules, limited capsules, and prime capsules. The version you get is dependent on how much the HP of the bulky vendor Heartless has left. The Heartless itself looks like one of those Japanese gotcha machines, and the more HP it has, the higher chances it has of dropping a valuable synthesis item, which is needed in order to get the game's strongest weapon. Although you kind of have to farm for these capsules as they randomly appear throughout the world. Cool concept, I just hate hunting these down. Jungle parry, overhead, grab on, and hang on. These all take place during the steamboat fight against people. Heat. Jungle parry and overhead really show Sora's accuracy from across the pond, while grab on and hang on allow him to get closer to the cage. It's really up to the player to determine if they want to keep attacking for more damage or cling on to safety for another round. I like the pick and choose nature of these since they lean into the game's strategy. Pete about face. So this one, I actually like a lot. I just wish it was used more throughout the game. You'll be sending back the Timeless River Pete to a stunned modern Pete just by bashing into him. This is a cute Disney interaction that I enjoyed where Sora just looks like he gets a laugh out of it. The same thing with Pete's pinball. Sora and Hercules work together to knock Pete outside of his shield, especially in a game where Hercules finally joins some of the battles. It's not until Kingdom Hearts 3 that he's a full party member, but Pete Pinball makes me appreciate him a little bit more. With Freeze, you can get the hostile program to remain in place. This reaction is a reward for filling up the cluster gauge, and with it, the enemy will remain frozen in place for Sora to just put the beats on him. I've seen videos where people have taken out the program within a single freeze by just laying into him. Dope stuff. Twilight Thorn Reversal. Now I mentioned Twilight Thorn because Kingdom Hearts 2 has three different reversal commands. This one is used exclusively in the Twilight Thorn fight, making it so Roxas can get up to his face and land some attacks. It's one of those first instances we get to see the character get so high up in the air, trying to dodge these lightning strikes and land a bit of extra damage. It comes back during the final boss of the game, when Xemnas is trying to shoot similar lightning bolts at the player. I like reaction commands that boost the player's movement options a lot. And this one goes full circle. Master Control Program Delete and Charge. You know this one, it's how we defeated the MCP in the Space Paranoid. After taking down the wall, you're able to attack him directly. You really gotta mash the triangle button as it felt like the more you mashed it, the more damage you were doing. You also get this really cool pose with Tron and Sora. The screams also just echo in my ear. <sighs>
Genie, Jafar, roll up and spin burst. Sora goes behind Jafar and grabs him by his little genie tail and spins him around until he gets dizzy. Isn't that one of the silliest things you've ever heard? Although the true tech is attacking him for as long as possible once the reaction is over. It leaves Jafar open for so long that you can really just attack him and take out a ton of his HP. Effective ability and comment and gave me those silly Disney feels. Grim Reaper, Hinder, Loot Launch, and Return. I combine all of these since they're used in the same battle. With Hinder and Loot Launch, you can finally deal some damage to this boss that is otherwise invincible. And you can really put the beats on him while hitting him with his own weapon. The coins go flying everywhere, offering Sora the chance to collect them for some extra damage later. That's when Return comes in as Sora needs to return the treasure back to the chest in order to keep attacking. This is one of those bosses that I really despise and the reaction command makes it much more bearable. Another one like that is the Ride the Wind and Sora abilities. Mainly used during the Mulan second visit, Sora can get around a bit faster and launch himself into the air. It's a nice way to get around faster in that world if you don't have glide. Not only that, but it makes getting in the air to bring down the Storm Rider a lot easier. Then there's Tornado Ride, where if Sora can land a successful counter, you'll be able to ride the Heartless and spin around bashing nearby enemies. I love when Sora literally uses the Heartless as a weapon from time to time. Reminds me a lot of Cyclone, as it's one of the first reaction commands we encounter. When battling soldiers, Cyclone just completely clears right through them. A fast and tactical move that keeps the action moving while doing a ton of damage. Shift Shot also takes the enemy projectile and shifts it right back at where it came from. The ball even lingers for a little bit, providing damage to nearby foe. Sora also looks really cool in this pose as he's channeling back some dangerous magic. Clear Shot is exactly like this move, but Sora will send the ice magic back towards its sender. It's the same pose in everything, and it prevents Sora from being frozen solid. Makes sense for me to put them right next to each other. Wind Dance is used when facing off against the Neo Shadow Heartless. Sora will rise in the air and rapidly strike at them, and I really like this one because it focuses on Sora's fundamentals as a swordsman. Like, he gets up there and handles his business. Exactly the kind of reaction command I want when facing off against Neo Shadows. Although, this is an important thing to mention. This one is pretty rare and hard to pull off. Like, I had to work so hard to get the footage for this. It was taking forever to farm for this clip. I don't know why it took so long. Anyway, as for what I wasn't expecting is the Quick Blade Reaction Command. Only used against these enemies in the Space Paranoid, Sora will teleport behind his enemy and end its life. Like, whoa, where did all this energy come from? Like, you could do that this entire time? It's like Cyclone, but with a bit more pizzazz attached to it. Bat Cry is also another really cool one where Sora just grabs a bat and swings them all around. I like how Sora stays in the air for this attack, and its range is incredible. Anytime I've used it, Bat Cry has taken out most of the enemies nearby. Root Ravenger is the same, as Sora literally uproots a Heartless, causing tons of HP to appear on the field. The Roots are also revealed, making it so he can attack them directly. After Root Ravenger, the enemy Heartless are basically a joke. Powerful ability with a bit of extra heals? Sign me up. Then there's Air Twister, a reaction command that causes Sora to turn his enemy's momentum against it. The pirate Heartless will charge at Sora and he just catches them, spins them right back, and gives them a little slap on the noggin. What a Sora way to handle that. I, I love it so much. With failsafe, Sora and Roxas will slam the assassin nobodies into the ground, causing them to explode. I like the little charge the character does before slamming the enemy into the ground to really show its impact. It stomps for a moment and the shockwave spawns from the ground, blasting everybody nearby. It's cool because it's one of those early reaction commands that you get towards the start of the game, so you're really able to see the type of power you're messing with early on. Then there's the begin game and stop reaction command with the dice nobodies. Normally you're able to challenge these enemies to a quick game where your reaction speed will be tested. You need to land a circle within the time limit and if you succeed you'll get items. The thing that places it here is how it makes it so much easier to grind out master form. This yellow outfit requires the drive orbs in order to level up and this is the best place to do that. Throw on the sweet memories keyblade and start grinding out those levels. Next up is Tron setup. Now I'm going to include every summon and limit that appears in the game since they all use the triangle button reaction commands to complete their attack, and with Tron setup, we get this dope animation of Tron and Sora working together. My biggest issue with this one that prevents it from getting any higher is that it's pretty sluggish. Once you attack, you're kind of locked into the floor until the attack ends. In a game like this where you're expected to keep moving, it's pretty slow. But at the same time, you don't retain any damage, so it gets the job done. My least favorite of the limits in the game, but still not a bad one. Jumping into the world of summons, we're gonna look at Peter Pan. When using Neverland, Sora is able to glide for a little bit like he could back in Kingdom Hearts 1. Images from the original Kingdom Hearts will appear on the screen, reminding us of his past adventures. Not only only that, but you can get foes to drop HP and MP from these attacks, giving Sora some room to heal after the summon meter is over. Tink will also give Sora a bit of heals, and if you die during the summon, you'll come back with a free res, which is always nice. They also team up to rapidly jab everyone at the very end. I think it's pretty charming, but still, probably my least favorite of the summons. Nothing against this one, I just like the other ones a little bit more. And for the final reaction command of tier C, we're going to be looking at Riku's dark shield. Whenever Sora gets hit, Riku will throw up a dark shield to block incoming attacks. See, that sounds pretty cool in concept, but in reality, that little shield isn't saving anybody from anything. When it spawns, it's usually mad far from Sora to begin with. I don't think this has ever saved me from an actual attack before, but since it's Riku and I like the shield design, it reminds me a lot of the Reflex spell. It just ranks this high. Also, Riku. Riku is a sexy guy. Hey, 
That's pretty good. Beginning with another summon, the Stitch Reaction Blast is pretty decent. Sora and Stitch separate themselves from their enemies and enter a new plane of reality where they team up and play some music, not only damaging the enemies but causing them to drop items. I like how Sora is shredding his Keyblade on the side while Stitch has a ukulele. It also ends with Sora holding Stitch like a little baby. So cute. Ranking it right next to it goes Chicken Little, where during my initial playthrough, I didn't fully understand his power. With his whistle, he's able to congregate all nearby Heartless to a single location. It makes it so they don't move for a little while. And and since you get Chicken Little fairly early in the game, it's a perfect replacement for the Magnet spell. It basically does the exact same thing, but automatically. And then of course, there's the first person mode where you can shoot firecrackers and balls, but I don't care about none of that. This chicken right here has saved my life on so many level one runs because of his power. I have to put some respect on his name. He is fantastic. For more enemy based reaction commands, release is a really fun one. With it, Sora is able to use his keyblade and unlock the darkness from physical objects. It's kind of like he's performing an exorcism with it. And this works with multiple enemies from the door boss to the chandelier to the column enemies. It really leans into Sora's ability to unlock things with his keyblade. I'm glad a reaction command can capture that in multiple ways. When facing off against Scar, you can use the counter reaction command. I like this one a lot since Sora and Scar will tumble around a little bit before Sora kicks them off. I like how they really lean into the lion situation here, showing off how lions would really fight in a situation like this. Of course, Sora can shoot off lightning and fire out of his weapons, so it's, it's not entirely fair. I just really like the animation for this one. For a really slick animation though, let's take a look at Slingshot. During the Dark Thorn battle, there are tons of high quality reaction commands to look at. For now though, Slingshot will send Sora flying towards his enemy from across the map. He just uses it to build momentum for his lunge? So sick. For more swordsman love, the press and takedown commands for the Shen Yu boss fight are tense. Not only does Shen Yu have a bigger body build than Sora, Sora just doesn't care about any of that. He will face him head on and push through. Eventually, Shen Yu attempts to get a slice at Sora, but he's too fast for that and sends him flying. I wonder how that Keyblade takes Shen Yu. For more Sora versus human interactions, the return fire one is just too clean. In Port Royal, players will challenge pirates with swords and guns of their own. With return, Sora stands firmly in place, throws up his Keyblade, and lets physics do the rest, resulting in bullet returning back where it came from. Look how clean this pose is. Sora literally just murdered a man with his own leg. This is a kid's game. <laughs> Speed Trap and Arrow Blade are another set that appears throughout the game multiple times when taking out a swarm of Heartless in a crowd, and when defeating Pete in Timeless River. Aeroblade in particular will do a ton of damage to nearby air enemies. It's also perfect to protect Sora from incoming attacks. Big fan of the damage output on this one. For Flare though, Lion Sora didn't have to do all this. The Rodeo and Grand Cross reaction command is so disrespectful. Sora literally climbs a Heartless and uses it to stomp out everybody else who's nearby. And then when he's done with him, he hits him with an aerial flip and Swan dives face first into the dirt. Do I even need to say more? Another one where Sora uses his enemies strength against him would be the Lance Tug. As it's flying through the air, Sora will hitch a ride and collect the damage along the way. And just like the Grand Cross, Lance Tug ends with it slamming right into the floor, knocking everything in its vicinity. The only reason this is a little bit higher is because you can use it in multiple worlds. Unfortunately, Grand Cross is stuck in the Pride Lands. <laughs> Heal Stomp is a quick jump ability on those healing enemies. Although with Sora's size 22 Timberland boots landing on the enemy's noggin, it causes it to drop HP balls as well as constantly healing the entire party. I know this Heartless is going to have a concussion after that. With Bolt Reversal, players will send back an electric shock from those large tower enemies. Unlike other reaction commands that automatically channel it towards the foe, you actually have to mash for this one. And the more you mash, the faster you break out of its control. And the knockback from that electric ball hits so many enemies nearby, it's always helpful. It feels good to take out a bunch of bigger foes at once. As for bump and meteor spike, this one makes Sora feel like a basketball pro, grabbing this large spike ball and slamming it into the ground. This one's dope because you get multiple dribbles before the reaction command finishes. And if you miss the first one, the second one is probably gonna hit. And that moment when we're rushing through Hollow Bastion and fighting alongside the Final Fantasy characters, this reaction comes in so clutch in that moment. Jumping into the realm of Organization 13, we're going to be looking at Zigbar's Break and Warp Strike. Since this is Zigbar exclusive, it really has that extra flair. Sora teleporting to the location of the bullet that he just hit is, is so cool. It really taps into this teleportation power that Sora just seems to have this entire time. Of course, landing this also gives us one of the most iconic lines in the series. You clever little sneak! Reaction commands are really starting to show their flair a lot more aggressively at this point, which is why I adored the Luke Sword Begin game final game challenge he does, where the entire battle is put on pause and the player will need to get four circles, with each command slot going by faster with each correct decision. The final one is going so fast, it feels like your heart is going to stop. And after successfully winning that, that's it. The battle is over. You just gotta sneeze on him. Just combo him one more time and the deed is done. As much as I don't like all of Luke Sword's games, I do really like this one. It's so fun. It's very stressful. Big fan though. Then there's Lexius, where he's constantly in a 
fit of rage. So much so, you can't even lay a hand on him while he has his fiery aura going off. That is until you hit him with Mega Impact, which brings Sora back a single step and he just lunges, telling Lexius to calm down with that behavior. Now you get a little time to beat him to a pulp before he gets angry again. But do you know the best way to deal with anger? A giant laser! During the final sequences of Kingdom Hearts 2, Riku and Sora will need to use an air glider to defeat Zenus's dragon form. After a while of absorbing lasers, you can fire back with the Mega Laser. If aimed properly, it can take down multiple HP bars within a single hit. It's incredibly satisfying, Lan, and it really makes this fight much more bearable. And to close out the B tier, I've got two more commands for you, both coming in from the Demix battle in Hollow Bastion. The first being the less popular of the two, but still pretty cool of the two, Show Stealer. Both he and Sora step into the spotlight, only for Demix to try and take Sora's head and him ducking and punishing him for it. It also knocks him right into the air for the player to retake control and continue the combo. Then of course, there's the iconic one that has been drilled into Kingdom Hearts fans for generations. Dance, water, dance! It's one of those quotes that just sticks out when talking about Kingdom Hearts, and it is constantly brought up. With this attack, Demix will send out water clones for Sora to defeat. Outside of just killing them all, Sora can just grab them and use them in his attack pattern. It's a cool little mini section during the initial playthrough of the game, but then they had to go too far with that data version. Trying to kill 99 water clones in 30 seconds feels like an Olympic sport. Regardless, this is a key moment that has stuck with Kingdom Hearts fans forever. The amount of sauce. Oh my god. The amount of sauce that went into making the genie summon is incredible. There's so much flair and personality that goes into this one. First things first, they gave genie a keyblade and made it match with the one from Agrabah. And just like Sora, he has multiple drive forms, each with their own attack patterns and designs. Genie is one of those that has so much sauce on him, it's incredible how much was packed into the summon. I love that his clothes change with each of the forms and you're able to pick and choose. Bringing him out is a visual treat that really captures Kingdom Hearts on a fundamental level. Just anime and Disney doing some really dope stuff together. But to bring it back to the basics, it's going to be the game's first reaction command, reversal. Originally used by Roxas when facing off against the Dusk, it quickly becomes a staple throughout the entire series. Not only does Roxas continue to use reversal in future titles, but even in this game, Sora uses reversal against Roxas just like Roxas would have. And it happens during your fight with him. It's such a small detail that really leans into the Reaction Command's relationship with Roxas, because reversal is a special one because of him. It is Roxas's Reaction Command. It might be basic as it just shuffles the player out of the way, but its connection to the narrative is what makes this one so neat. And you know what else is neat? A lobotomy. The Sark high climb and needle dive commands are just nuts. During the second fight with Zark, he summons a giant wall and Sora just jumps right on top of it and uses it as a platform. He then goes insane and dives his entire body and Keyblade clean through his brain. The sound that Sark makes after this attack is done? <laughs> this game is rated E for everyone. Is that true? Hold on. Kingdom Hearts 2 ESRB. This game is rated E10 for everyone. <laughs> Or what about the time Sora ran for his life from an enemy that is a hundred times bigger than him? With Fend and Leap, Sora is bobbing and weaving from every ground strike. And then we get this really cinematic angle that keeps track of his exact location. Then at the very end, Sora fights back against this giant foe and takes him down. He remains stunned and the player is able to go crazy on the main head. I also like how the Leap Command can get us on top of him immediately without having to take him down. But just to see this little lion cub beat down a goliath of a foe? Oh my god, it's so cool. Storm Rider Slide and Vertical Toss are also up there. I really hate having to go back in the air to damage this boss. And with this move, Sora's just so smooth with it. He slides under his body and hits him with the mink, 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 causing the Heartless that soars in the air to come crashing down. Then Sora literally styles on it with this wild pose. You get a few seconds of being able to hit the boss openly, which is also so nice. As for another boss battle, I was not expecting this one to have so much bangers. Looking at Captain Barbosa, he has two different reaction commands. The first is Twin Counter and Sonic Dive. Jack sends Sora flying into the air and they both combo Barbosa. It's all in slow motion too, and you can really feel every hit of this reaction. It's crazy how this brother's floating in the air. Then there's Land and Reverse Blade, where Sora steps on Barbosa's sword and hits him with the cleanest uppercut I have ever seen. It sends him flying and Sora can continue his combos from there. This is why I love Kingdom Hearts boss fights where the enemy is the same weight class as Sora, because we can really see what he is capable of. Of course, then there's the casual animal abuse with Cerberus evade, jump, and dog paddle. I really like this sequence because it's showing Sora using more than just his Keyblade. He's using his physical strength to hold back the Guardian of the Underworld, and he dodges multiple heads at once, until he eventually gets tired of playing nice and hits Cerberus right into the ground. Like Storm Rider, you get a chance to attack right after without any punishment. Then there's the battle against the Dark Thorn that contains some of my favorite early game hits. With Step Vault, Catch, and Pendulum Round, Sora will hit his foe with a chandelier. <laughs> wow, 
Smacking him so hard that the invisible foe will turn visible for a limited time. There's just something so stylish about Sora stepping on him like this, bashing him right on his body and continuing to keep the battle going. This is one of the first times we see how agile Sora can really be. Then there's capture for lock, shock, and barrel. For this reaction command, it's similar to four, but Sora will be able to hit these three buttholes into a box. Okay. So, a little background on why this one is so high for me because of how simple it is. So back in Kingdom Hearts 1, there's a battle against Lock, Shock, and Barrel in Oogie's Manor. Although the space is so small and the camera isn't the greatest, and when I was a kid, this battle killed me so many times. And ever since then, I've developed a vendetta against these three characters. So this one allows me to ship them off far away? I love it. Entering back into the world of pirates, we got Back Shuffle and High Counter. This one's only available when facing off against the pirate enemies. Sora will do three quick dodges and then beat them in the face with the Keyblade. I like how he's bobbing and weaving with every attack. More sword fights like this? Please and thank you. Next up is Full Swing, Guard, and Kick Back. All of these attacks make it so much easier to deal with the large body harness. In the older games, you really needed to walk around him and hope he didn't turn around. He was one of the more annoying enemies to fight in Kingdom Hearts 1, but in Kingdom Hearts 2, you're finally able to start fighting back. Kick Back especially, since it shows Sora doing a rapid combo while the large body is spinning out of control. You really show this Heartless who's boss after the pain and suffering from the past. For another Heartless-based one, we got Rising Sun. Of course, one of the most famous instances of this ability is during the 1000 Heartless fight. With it, Sora is able to tear through enemies in an instant. Otherwise, this battle would have probably taken forever and not be nearly as entertaining. There's another reaction command in this battle, and obviously if you know, you know, but that's gonna be deeper in the video, of course. Then there's the Berserk, Eclipse, and Magna Storm abilities, used when collecting the Berserker's weapon and using it against them. It will collect all nearby enemies and scoop them right up, and Sora will then be able to bash them with an angry fury. This one is also part of the Psyx boss fight used as the main method of cooling him down. It's dope to see certain nobodies have the same strength and weaknesses as their organization member counterparts. This is just a brutal combo in general. For Sora taking it a little slower, we got the Dual Stance. This one only occurs when facing off against the Samurai nobodies and every takes a pause. All the enemies will stop and the lights will dim. As the command deck at the bottom goes blank, containing only one correct answer. Sora gets it, he'll win and punish the enemy. But if he misses... I like how different this one is compared to the rest. You can't just button mash out of this one, like you really need to pay attention. I also really like the little chime that it makes when it's activated. Really sets up the mood. For A tier party members, we got Jack Skellington's Dance Call. Jack really has height over Sora and takes advantage of this by just flinging the small child around. You both then summon ghouls and ghosts from a pocket dimension that do tons of damage, with the finale stomping out the yard and fireworks shooting right out of the ground. Jack never misses with his theatrics. But speaking of fireworks, Mulan's red rocket is right behind it. Instead of it just being Mulan in the attack, Mushu tags in along and lights up the screen. Since he was a summon in Kingdom Hearts 1, it's so nice to be able to fight alongside him again. You all dash across the sky and fire encompasses every dash. Hellfire then rains from the sky, launching everything in its path. The evolution Mulan makes from Ping at the beginning in this world is just so much better. Then there's Stalwart Fang from Beast, which is also incredibly powerful. I love how both Beast and Sora let out this loud roar. Then they just work together and start to pounce on everything in the area. The attack is so strong, any nearby enemies will get stun locked right in their location. And it ends with Beast giving our boy a proud pat on the back, and they both work together in one final shout, widening out the entire screen. The evolution of their relationship from Kingdom Hearts 1 really shows in this limit. But of course, one of my favorite limits in the game comes from Aura. With Bushido, the power of Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy finally become one. Everyone gets blown back as towers of light and darkness just rain on nearby enemies, ending with an epic clash of our heroes' weapons resulting in a damn hurricane. I love seeing the Keyblade combine with other weapons and doing some amazing, insane stuff. And a literal hurricane? Like, Orin wins with this one. Moving on to Queen Minnie, while not being directly a party member, she has one of the best reaction commands in the game. When escorting her throughout the halls of Disney Let's Castle, go. if Sora gets close enough, he'll be able to use Faith, where the Queen summons a giant pillar of light sending nearby enemies flying so damn far. It's incredible the kind of power the Queen possesses. Like how they got her trapped in the house when she's doing light nukes with her hands. Regardless, it's even possible to clear out this whole room with just Queen Minnie. Not a single Keyblade swing is required. Yo, put her in the front lines of Kingdom Hearts 4, this war would be over in no time. For boss battles, the Zaldan one is considered to be one of Kingdom Hearts 2's most difficult. His wind attacks are nearly impenetrable and his lances have so much range. Truly, this fight would be much harder if it wasn't for the Learn Command. Like the Samurai, the Dragon Goon uses the same moves as the organization member attached to it. You'll be able to download his moves and use it against him. Sora will launch into the air and diving into his windshield to tear it down. Also, the player can learn up to nine different dives at a time. Stacking them up and using them against Zaldin can easily take out an entire health bar. I love using my enemies' attacks against them. Makes the fight so much easier. And we're going back to the very beginning with Twilight Thorn. Key Counter, Lunar Salt, and Break Raid were the first ones to give us a scale of where reaction commands can go. At this point in the game, you barely got any movement options. You just started as Roxas, and he's as stiff as a rock. 
respectfully. But then with this battle, we got to see his real movement and cunning in one of these most unfortunate situations. The Twilight Thorn will trap Roxas in the air and he's just messing with him in this moment. But Roxas will smack him right in the face and this giant enemy gets treated like a ragdoll. And he's not a fan of that, let me tell you. He flips over the entire stage and tries to drop a nuclear bomb, only for Roxas to break it down with the power of the Keyblade. When I was a kid and I saw this sequence for the first time, it completely blew my mind. And this was just the beginning of the journey we had coming. I loved it. I also love putting the beats on Mark's scene. During her data battle, she'll summon multiple versions of herself, all of which will dash and attack Sora at once. It can be overwhelming and she'll do a ton of damage if you aren't careful. Although if you catch her clone slipping, you can use the merge command, as Sora will grab the clones and spin them into each other. And the moment they clash, they return back into one, making the fight a little bit easier for a short period of time. But the animation for landing this attack? That looks super painful. For another organization member, Marluxia has his reaction command built into his battle. At the very start, he'll whisper something into Sora's ear, causing a hit limit to appear above his head. This number will be relative to Sora's level at the time and each hit will cause it to decrease. If it reaches zero, the battle will be over. First, the aerial strike command will put the beats on Marluxia. It's just a brutal chain of attacks but Sora literally steps on his weapon. He does not let Marluxia breathe and shatters his back in the process. But then there's restore count. If you wait a little bit longer, Sora will steal Marluxia's scythe and just start beating him with it. Landing this will also restore a few attacks back to Sora's counter, allowing him to live a little longer. A cinematic butt whooping that increases my chance of winning sign me up and for the last reaction command of the a tier show me your strength the first time when I fought against Sephiroth and he pulled this attack on me, I basically crapped my pants. I wasn't ready for that at all my first time. And I know I wasn't the only one who got caught by this block like this. Upon loading up my second run, I get it this time and Sora just goes insane. Sephiroth standing still directly behind him after all of his dash attacks are being blocked, it will occasionally happen a few more times throughout the battle and it will throw you off. But successfully landing this has always been a satisfying experience. That's what I'm talking about! That's why he's the MVP! That's why he's the GOAT! During your first battle with Xemnas at the Memory Skyscraper, he will put the Invitation to Nothing Curse on Sora. In order to dispose of it, you need to meet with Xemnas at the very top. Although you get three different options for attacking depending on how fast you react. If Sora swings too early, you'll get Clash, where Xemnas will be able to dodge the attacks without any damage. Waiting a little bit longer will give Breakthrough, causing them to fight a little bit while in the air. Although, if you want to get the timing down perfectly, you'll get Finish, which causes Sora to lunge at Xemnas with rapid attacks, leaving him stunned and helpless once the reaction is over. This one is special because you really got to pay attention to get it right. Plus, the animations are so brutal and exactly what Xemnas deserves at this point. Wildcat Simba is going to start us off because I'm just going to clear out the last bit of limits. I adore this one so much just because of how juiced it is. Sora lets another mighty roar out, but this time he's literally a lion. Both Simba and Sora channel their inner earthbenders as spires rise from the ground. Wasting no time, both can charge super fast at a specific target. And it's happening so fast that the enemy is not going to be able to escape. Ending it with the greatest roar of all time, opening up towers of light that kills everything. It's so beefy. Like, oh my god goodness, they really put the damage and animation time into this one. Then boom, Aladdin Speedster literally knocks your lights out. The first few frames of this limit of Aladdin just murdering you is amazing. Then he has the audacity to come back like he didn't do nothing. It honestly captures Aladdin's character perfectly. Then both he and Sora will dash through the air and attack nearby enemies. But the best part of this is where they jump off of each other, pushing on each other's bodies and defying all physics to murk everyone in the area. And then they freaking high five. There's so much sauce. For Bluff, Sora and Jack Sparrow act out an entire cutscene. They pretend to find a treasure only for it to scoop up everything nearby. Anything caught in this vortex isn't going anywhere. But if I had a favorite part, it definitely has to be the end. Sora pushes the chest to close it while Jack drops a bomb on the inside. They look at each other like, man, we gotta get out of here, then boom, everything gets turned to dust. I wouldn't expect anything less from these two and their interactions. Definitely the strongest Disney World party member for me. Get up on the Hydra's back! I couldn't keep going without introducing the GOAT. This line has been drilled into Kingdom Hearts fans for generations. For this one, I'm going to combine all the reaction commands in this battle into one because it perfectly captures everything that makes these things so amazing to begin with. First, the Phil 1-2 and Urninator bring Phil into the battle as he tosses the urn into the air and Sora spikes it into the Hydra. But Phil will just say it again and again until you get up on that Hydra. Then the Pegasus run gives us a dope cutscene where Sora soars in through the air. Even though Pegasus is not a party member, they put the time into this one, ultimately resulting in the Hydra. Hydra Vanquish, where Sora will commit a rapid slash that decapitates every head and wins the battle. Truly, this boss fight is a moment in time for Kingdom Hearts fans. I always try to remember how good this one was and to get up on the Hydra's back. Remember Rising Sun? Let's take a look at its superior brother, Snag and Sparkle Ray. In the Battle of a Thousand Heartless, Sora will grab a nearby enemy and use their giant blast in a circle. This laser can easily cut through 50 Heartless at a time. It's just so satisfying to tear through them this easily. While the Keyblade takes several hits to break through a Heartless body, the Sparkle Ray just saves you so much time. An iconic reaction command for the culture. But if we're gonna talk about the culture? Anger and hate are supreme. 
one of the most iconic boss battles of all time, Xemnas features three reaction commands that are just incredible. After getting some good HP on Xemnas, he'll eventually get angry and capture Sora. Now it is up to Riku to step in and save the day with the rescue command. This is the only time in the entire game you're able to play as Riku. For a short moment, you need to sprint to Sora's aid before he dies. His HP is slowly dropping, but Riku is not going to let that happen. I like how Riku is able to use Dark Aura as a normal projectile. Once Riku approaches, he's able to put the beats on Xemnas. And just look at this, he takes it so personally. And it all comes together for the final reflect in the game. The last thing standing between you and concluding Kingdom Hearts 2 is mashing X and the triangle button to reflect all of these incoming lasers. When I was a kid, I was only pressing triangle, thinking that was enough. And it took me several tries to realize that I was supposed to be pressing both. And it's really a race of stamina at this sequence as it takes several seconds to finish. But it is a culmination of everything Sora and Riku have been up through to this point. And once it's over, you get to enjoy the end, which is still one of my favorite endings in the series. So, so good. When Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix debuted, it added Limit Form into the game. It is a costume that allows Sora to channel some of his abilities from Kingdom Hearts 1. This includes Sonic Grave, Last Arcanum, Strike Grade, and Infinity, all of which return from the older games but with a flashier coat of paint. In general, Limit Form is always a favorite due to not needing Donald and Goofy in order to activate it. I added this among the list since they all are connected to the triangle button, and once you activate them, spam that triangle button to start building up some damage. Of course, there's Infinity, which changes depending on how long you hold it. All have their moment to shine in the game since so you unlock them about halfway through. I just wanted to do a quick mention of the goat form. Just like the Samurai Nobodies, Roxas will strip away Sora's abilities in favor of a little game. If successful, Sora will steal Roxas' keyblades and use them against him. Almost every attack will be followed up by Roxas' keyblades. You're basically putting the beats on Roxas with his own weapons. And there's so many different ways it can be used in combination with Limit Form. Sora is also given three keyblades at the same time. Like, do I even really need to argue for this one? We can take him on our own. Ah! Since these all happen in the same sequence, I'm gonna combine them all. The level of sauce and flair that is present in this moment. Of course, they aren't gonna be pulling any stops with it being the finale of the game. Sora and Riku are really about to put everything on the line. The start of this final sequence requiring them to rush at Xemnas in his tower. But you can just see Sora exhibit such strength. He's literally cutting up skyscrapers and destroying cities in the process. And later on, we get riding shot in Meteor Rain where Sora launches a building at Xemnas, only for him to block it and then Riku pick up the slack by sending in the broken pieces. I don't know who did the power scaling for Sora and Riku in these moments, but oh my goodness. It's everything I could want in flashy cinematics that extend the gameplay experience. Especially seeing the two boys work together like this, it is everything I could ever hope for. You really do remember me this time. I'm so flattered! First Edge, Overtake, and Clear Light are only present in the Axel fights, both in the early game and in the data battle. I really like how Sora and Roxas do the same sequence of attacks, even though Sora only has one Keyblade compared to Roxas' two. Slamming Axel into the ground and clearing out the fire is also super helpful. This battle can be tough in the data version otherwise, but this one sits high because it is the last battle of the prologue. It's so much flashier and grand than everything that came before it up to this point, all because they put a second Keyblade in Roxas' hands. It was a turning point in both the gameplay and the narrative. I will never forget the Axel fight. Oh yeah, and... Similar to Limit Form, the Trinity Limit is something Sora can do all on his own. There's the version that allows him to dash and attack enemies quickly, but then there's more elaborate versions if you have Donald the Goofy with you. Mega Drive will cause the game to shoot off Drive Orbs, Ultima will cause fireworks to appear, and Break will help Sora with some aerial combos. I like how it ends with a reference to the Trinity Limit in Kingdom Hearts 1, with the game coming together and nuking everything on the screen. But not only that, Donald and Goofy also have their own set of limits you can choose from. All of these are going to be S tier for the sheer fact that you can use them in almost every situation. From world to world, Donald and Goofy will always be there for you. For Donald, the Fantasia ability will give him Comet, as Magical Blast will spawn in the air and explode in a spectacle of light. But his real shining ability has got to be Duck Flare. This thing can cheese out almost any boss in the game. With every firework homing in on the target, it's possible to lock enemies for a while. It'll do a ton of damage while giving Donald something more to do than just healing. Then there's Goofy with Whirl of Goof and Knock Smash. Both of these are silly as Goofy just flies around knocking enemies in the process. But if y'all remember in Vanilla Kingdom Hearts 2, I remember Knock Smash being super busted. It basically ate bosses HP and there was nothing they could do about it. Sora, Donald, and Goofy are the boys and to see them get beefy moves like this, it was just sick. It really allowed them to be viable throughout the entire adventure. But what about an ability that helps us after our adventure is over?
Oh, you already know. On occasion, if Sora dies against a boss battle, King Mickey will come and save the day. Here, players can control Mickey and he has his own magic, attack patterns, weight, and everything. And you're not directly summoning Mickey as he will only appear sometimes, but it acts as a second chance for the battle, as Mickey can clear out bosses all on his own. The pearl magic is also so strong, nothing can handle it. It's basically a homing projectile that stuns and does tons of damage. But Mickey isn't able to kill any of the bosses. You have to leave that to Sora. <laughs> Mickey has the healing light ability, which after being fully charged will rest Sora to his full abilities, HP, MP, drive, and all. You'll be able to pick up where Mickey left off. With his omnipotence throughout the game, it's incredible that he even appears like this. He could have just come in and saved Sora with a potion, but the developers went above and beyond and made him an entirely new playable character. It solidifies why Mickey is really one of my favorites. Now that we've gone through the entire game, listed every reaction command, summon, limit, ability we could find, the next one I mention is my all-time favorite. The best one in Kingdom Hearts 2 is... The biggest motivating factors in Kingdom Hearts 2 pushing the player forward is Sora reuniting with Riku. The moment he wakes up from his slumber, he travels across the world looking for his lost friend. And when you finally find him after all this time, he pulls off with one of the sauciest limits of all time. He joins your party towards the very end and forever changed the blueprint of my mind. Like all limits in Kingdom Hearts 2, they aim to be cinematic, but there's so many layers to session. Starting off with the onslaught of Keyblade strikes between our wielders, then jumping between either Last Saber, which both are rapidly stabbing at their foe, or Dark Cannon, which is one of the few times where we see Sora using darkness as a weapon. Would you like an option between 13 blades or one giant blade? Well, on the bright side, you don't have to pick. First off, being able to summon 13 swords in an attack is already dope, but you're able to alternate between these two with every attack, and it ends with the clash between light and darkness. I already mentioned how much I love when reaction commands focus on keyblades, but this one just defines both of our heroes. The impact causes the screen to swell up until it is eventually engulfed in white and you just see how much damage it really does. Everything on the screen is definitely dead, and the boys celebrate it at the end with a fist bump from the themes of light and darkness, from the friendship between two teenage boys, Session captures everything that makes Kingdom Hearts 2 special, making it my favorite triangle interaction throughout the whole game. I really can't think of a single one that would top it. Wait a minute. This is the best one. They put Tony Hawk Pro Skater in this game just as a fun side activity. This is something I can easily find myself doing for hours because of just how well it controls. You can do tricks in the air and glide around and the skateboard appears throughout various worlds. Getting rad is just something that everybody can get along with. And you press triangle to get on it. So I'm gonna count it. This is my favorite reaction command. <laughs> oh. And I think I got them all? God, I hope I got them all. <laughs> Reaction commands are a part of the identity of Kingdom Hearts 2, and I wanted to celebrate these iconic pockets of time because they definitely have an impact on the overall experience. When Kingdom Hearts 4 comes out, I'll probably also do a ranking of all of those reactions. The fact that they're coming back just shows us how important they are in providing us a grander scope. For now though, I'm gonna go lay down. This is a lot of work. I'm chopped, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> I'm gonna have a video later on in the week where I do like a showcase of all the reaction commands. It's all gonna be organized in one place and you guys can use that footage, but you know, I'll save that for that video when that drops or whatever. Be sure to keep an eye out for that. Thank you all so much for watching. Please be sure to comment, like, subscribe, and stay awesome.